All right, play test time or demonstration time because I've play tested this a few times already, but this is Fields of Fate. Um, here we have a 450 point Beastman Force, Minotaurs, Beastman Chief, um, Chaos Hounds, of course, and of course, old school uh, Beastman with halberds. Um, there's nothing fancy in any of this, there's uh, no command. Um, there are halberds and shields on that unit, because otherwise I'd get confused. Um, no command on the Minotaurs, just those extra hand weapons, because that's what's there. Um, there's nothing, no upgrades on the Chieftain, because I want this to be a quick demonstration game, and this is as quick as this game uh, can be. Playing Solo Hammer with these rules, just throw them all on the board. Over here we have the Chaos Warriors, so we've got some Chaos Hounds on that side as well. Um, some Fomir. Um, which will be the Chaos Ogres, taking on the role of Chaos Ogres. Chaos Warriors, five there with um, Standard and Musician, just because that was completely free in 5th edition. Um, there is our Chaos Champion. Um, and over here we've got some more Chaos Warriors on the other side of this wood. So, let's see. Um, I've played this game a few times now, and uh, I haven't won against... <laughs> the AI opponent yet. So let's see who goes first. Um, I'll do uh, red and the AI opponent can be blue. Setup's done. Let's see who gets the first turn. And it's me, thank criminy. So let's see how we go uh, one-handed with getting these beastmen uh, up and running. Over here. Off they go. Better do my animosity tests for the gores. And they have failed because the chief's leadership's only nine. So they're gonna stay right where they are. <laughs> this is a great start already. Once again, keep this game simple. So uh, no magic in this game. I've got two wizards, a wizard each side ready to go. Um, but that will be the next the next demonstration. That's it for Beastman turn one. Now for the main event. Let's see how the Chaos Warriors AI goes. Okay, so we start with army orders. It's a small enough game, so I'm gonna roll heroes and movement and attacks for each unit. And let's see what the army order gets. Six fanatical servants. So all units are subject to frenzy this turn. So hero chart now, we've got one hero, the Chaos Champion over there, and he's gonna get a one. So, challenged by demons, suffer D3 wounds, saves apply as normal, do not roll movement or action this turn. So that is devastating for the Chaos Champion and general of the Horde because I also have not paid for any upgrades over there, so he doesn't even have armor. So D3 wounds on the champion, the Chaos Champion, and he has, he has exactly one wound. So, oopsie daisy, um, he has gone, challenged by the Chaos Gods, and been removed immediately. Okay, so interestingly, um, they all have to take their uh, leadership tests at the moment without their uh, champion to help them because he has been taken in round one. So we've got the dogs on this side, which will be leadership six, and they have fled off the board. This is looking good for the beastmen. Like I said, I haven't actually uh, beaten this game yet. So this could be the game that does it. The Chaos Ogres are leadership five, six, seven, eight, and they have fled as well. Ah, off the board. Excellent. Now, love fifth edition. Chaos Warriors are leadership nine. They are okay. And so are the other warriors. They are not in charge range, so they don't have that automatic compulsory move to charge. So, we are gonna roll on the movement chart for them. The Chaos Warriors in the middle are gonna get a two, which means advance towards the nearest objective or the nearest enemy unit. That's just a normal move. 
And the other uh, Chaos Warrior unit is rolled a two again. So that is advance forward. Might be in with a chance in this game. Okay. That will be my turn and movement phase, charges first. I might try and declare a charge with these dogs. And then let's try and measure 12 inches. They are in range, huzzah. Ready to kill some Chaos Warriors, which might seem like suicide, but fifth edition, they don't come with Chaos armor unless you pay for it, so. And as this is a cheap old game, 500 points, I didn't pay for it. The uh, Beastmen are going to try and move this time, which they do. All right, we have our first combat. So, two attacks each for a Chaos Hound, two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. But Chaos Warriors are tough bastards. So let's go. Hitting on balls. And, and we are going to need fours again because they're toughness four. Ooh, lots of them this time. Excellent. And Chaos Warriors have heavy armor, so a five up save minus one for the strength four is sixes. Oh, they still managed to save two. Wowzers. Okay, so that's three down. That is looking good for the beastmen. Now, Chaos Warriors punching back. They are going to need threes to hit these dogs. They are going to need fours, and they miss both. Ouch. Okay, so they're down by three, but they have a standard. Um, so they are down by two. Leadership is um, nine on Chaos Warriors, so sevens are under. And they make it. All right, which means our dogs are going to wrap around. And it's not looking good. For the Warriors, turn two. Let's roll on charts. Actually, they were frenzied, weren't they? Derp. So, double attacks. Uh-oh. That's a one extra hit. It still didn't wound anyway. So, no dramas. They're defeated and can't be frenzied anymore. So, let's start on the charts for the army. We've got a three, which means all units become leadership ten. Pure devotion this round. We don't have a hero chart to roll on because our hero has buggered off. Um, so we've got a movement chart for the group not in combat. And we're going to roll a six, which means for the dark gods, march or charge towards the nearest enemy plus d6 to the movement. So let's see what we get for the extra movement. Four which means they're charging 8 inches, 9, 10, 11, 12. I still don't think they will make it to the nearest unit, but they are really going to zip right up. Next up, we have the attack chart. So, let's see if they do anything. I don't think they could do anything fancy with the dogs. Attack key enemy targets, champion... BSB, Wizards, there's none in that unit, so they're just going to attack as normal. They definitely have higher initiative, so away we go. Um, one, two, three, four attacks. Chaos Warriors hit three. Big numbers. Fours and up. One, two. Okay, there is no armor on these Chaos Hounds. So, two down. Now, I can see probably three bases can take a swing here. So that will be six attacks. Come on, puppies. Forced it. And forced a wound. God, they're doing well, these dogs. And sixes. Just save. None. All right. OK, 
Chaos Warriors are out. Out of there. All right, and next up, we have Beastman 2. So, I think we're definitely going to try and declare a charge here. Don't think we're going to get charges anywhere else. So let's get into it. Can we make eight inches? Yes, we can. In they go. And the rest of the movements. All right. Beastmen have charged here, so they're going to get the first turn. There is no champion or anything fancy here. So we've just got those four attacks. Hitting on fours. And wound on fours for the halberds. No. Uh-oh. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Attacks back to the Chaos Warriors. Might hurt. All right. Threes to hit. Weapon skill is better than a beastman. And strength four, toughness four. There's four to wounds. One, two, three wounds only. Yeesh. So, they are two wounds each, the Beastmen, in 5th edition. So technically, that's one casualty. And they have a rank. They, don't, they have a standard. So, um, that is one wound, one standard, one rank. They win by one. So the Beastmen need a break test with their chief nearby. And that will be 9 minus 1 is 8. Five, six, seven, eight. They are okay, but the Chaos Warriors will get to wrap around. All right, that's Beastman turn. Now it is up to Chaos Warriors turn three. And we'll do the army orders. Ah, uh, two. Prove yourself, which is, excuse me, dropping dice. No effect. No effect for prove himself. We don't have a hero chart, wizard chart, or a movement chart this turn, because they're in combat. Well, the attack chart, again, we've got the six, attack a key enemy character, but there's none in there, so we're just going to default to regular attacks, and we have still got five Chaos Warriors, so ten attacks, and on threes. Eee. And wounding on fours. Oh, the beastmen are <laughs> getting very lucky <laughs> this game. All right, beastmen are going to hit back. Uh, this time they are on the flanks. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one who just died is five attacks back. Fours hit. And fours wound. Two wounds. Once again, didn't pay for the Chaos Armor. That is sixes. Two down. Uh oh. And they will need to test. There is a rank. Um, and they lost two. So that's minus three. Three minus nine. Six. They are okay. All right. Baseman turn to finish them off. The Chieftain's going to charge in there. With his regular weapon, he is going to have three attacks. None of the other guys are going to do anything. They can't really fit into that melee. And one hit. No wounds. And the Chaos Warriors will strike back. One Chaos Warrior against the General. Hits. And wounds, because he's tough as five. And he will take a wound, I believe. He has three. Beastman Chief, three wounds. He's got two left. And the other two Chaos Warriors at the unit. They need big numbers this time. Threes. Ah, here we go. Two wounds. They have shields, sixes to save, but... There's minus one because of the strength. So, now the Beastmen are going to hit three of them. And they are going to get all of these 
Oh wow, and all of those. And six is to save, two down, only one left. They are on the flank as well. Six, I think we can call the game right there. <laughs> All right, we've got another general on the field. Nope, she's taken off. So, therefore, we are back to solo gaming. The first game was a wash for the poor Chaos Warriors. They did not have a great showing. This one, we are going to include mages. So there will be roles on the wizard chart. Now, something that I uh, am trialing out, okay? All of these rules, um, are of course pending updates and errata and uh, things as they play test and hopefully more people get on board. Um, but one of the things I've done is I've tried to make it more interesting and more replayable by not going through the same uh, magic choices for the AI uh, team as the player does. So I will get my normal um, spell from the list. There it is. Um, and I will use Winds of Magic and all that sort of stuff as I normally do. However, the AI team is going to roll on the wizard chart. And the wizard chart will say attempt one spell, one random spell um, from the list. So I notice in a lot of the old army books, all the spells are sort of written on a list. Um, so I've done it that way because sort of you're playing against the AI team and anything could happen like that wizard that one level one shaman could get a roll and fire off the strongest spell that that army has at you or it could get a completely useless spell and spare you um the trouble so it could uh, raise the tension basically by doing it this way rather than rolling up or dishing out the magic cards at the very start of the game and your ai um opponent has the lamest you know, spell that just boosts, I guess, how much magic he gets or something. And he's got that for the whole game. So kind of uh, pointless having a mage, enemy mage doing pretty much nothing for the whole game. So anyway, without further ado, uh, let's see how we go for which team is going first this time. And Chaos Warriors will be blue because they are Zench followers. And the Beastmen will be red. Who's getting turn one? Chaos Warriors this time. Okay. All right, let's see what they get for their army orders this time. One, unhappy masters. Weapon skill is halved for all units. That would be very upsetting if it wasn't the first roll of the game. So I guess they'll get away with it this time. Hero chart. We have two heroes now, okay? We have our champion and we have our sorcerer. So we're going to roll for our champion. I'm going to use a different colored dice this time. And the champion is on four, which means champion of the gods, plus one attack and plus one strength this turn. Again, would be good if they were a little bit closer. And on the red one, the shaman is four as well. So plus one attack and plus one strength, chosen of the gods. Right, now let's get through our wizard chart. Let's see what our first piece of magic AI is going to bring for us. Number two, one and two, attempt one dispel or one randomized spell. Now it says attempt. So in this case, the um, AI player is going to roll on the charts or is gonna do winds of magic, whatever the actual game entails. So fifth edition, winds of magic cards, so, here we go. Winds of Magic, three cards. So that'd be two for them and one for me. We're gonna pull out a random spell from this list. Ah, we'll take the top one. And Boon of Zench, one power. Chaos Sorcerer casts this spell. Immediately take D3 fresh magic cards from the deck. So, like I said, one of those spells that doesn't really do anything. Um, but he has the power to cast, so he's going to give it a shot. I have the power to dispel, um, but I don't have any dispel scrolls or anything like that, so, because I didn't pay for them. So therefore that goes off, they get D3 extra power cards, 
One, two, three. And, oh look, lucky old Chaos player. At the end of the turn, they keep a magic card. I'm guessing Chaos player is gonna wanna keep that one. And that is the end of that magic phase. And we'll put that back in the deck and we'll get a random spell next time he casts. Some of the results for a wizard are just automatic success or automatic total power. So that's why sometimes you need the power card, sometimes you don't. All right, that is the hero phase and the wizard phase. Let's get to the movement. All right, we've got ogres on the side here and they are chaos comes advance towards the enemy. So ogres move six. Cautious. The Shaman Sorcerer is next. March towards the nearest enemy. Next we have the first Chaos Warrior unit is two. So they are going to just advance. Sorcerer, so that's working as a bit of a... Uh... Um, next we have the Champion, who is going to be... A... Assailed by nightmares, and he is going to hold position this turn. So he's going to stay where he is. The next Chaos Warriors are also assailed by nightmares. They're going to hold their position in the center. And the dogs on the far side, they are going to march of metal. All right, and that is how the board looks. Completely random. I didn't have to make any of the decisions for the opponent. So if I win, I guess that means um, I've earned it rather than made it happen. My turn of Baseman. First we'll do our Animosity check, Primal Fury check. Five, six, seven, eight. We are within 12 of our General. So we'll pass and I don't think that's going to make a charge for us. So I'm just going to move up the Shaman is going to move up across from his counterpart. I'm going to have the dogs. I don't know if I should back up these. Nah. What are the chances that Gores are going to be defeated by Chaos Hounds, hey? What are the chances? Up we come. Puppies, you are going to go your eight. Let's slide you across a bit. And the Minotaurs should be 12. Because you just don't know. All right. That means my turn for magic. And three, four. So that's two each. Two for me. For them. Now, I did follow the rules for my own choice of magic cards, um, and I've ended up with this one. You're going to have to trust me. I didn't pick that out. Uh, it was a randomized uh, magic card. Let's see if I'll actually get to use it. It is Lash of Slanish. Range 8 inches. I guess that might reach the dogs. Um, Quivering Lash uncoils from the Sorcerer's Outstretch Hand Strikes his foes. Lash inflicts 2d6 strength, 4 hits in the same way as hits from bows, crossbows, armor saves, supplies, and all. Do I have the power? I do. Fantastic. All right, so I am going to cast that on a 1. Now, note on the chart, wizards will always attempt to dispel a spell if they can. So, of course, in 6th and 7th and 8th edition, they just make the roll, but in this edition, they need dispels um, and they do have one and they do have a power to go with it and I do not have any power to um, boost mine so instead of rolling uh, four five and six to dispel they will need a three four five six because they've boosted it by one so dispelling hopefully not no they fail fantastic I get a spell off okay those go away he keeps his Devilish total power. The lash goes off and is it within eight inches of the dogs? Sure is. 2d6. 
Oh, wow. Okay. That is good. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, and strength four. That will be fours to wound the puppies. And that is a lot of wounds where the dogs have had no upgrades. Um, so they are wiped out by a lash of slanesh. See ya puppies. All right, I'll definitely keep that. That is wonderful. I'll keep my dispel scroll in case I can use it. And that is my turn done because there's no shooting from the beastman side. So we're over to our AI player, who's no doubt a little bit miffed that we just got rid of all the dogs. So rolling on the army orders, we have one again, weapon skill halved. That is going to be upsetting. Hero chart, we'll start with a wizard because we just go across. And three, unholy hosts. Select one unit within 12 inches, replace D3 casualties or wounds. That would have been super helpful if he was closer to the dogs and could resurrect them. Um, okay, and hero chance for the champion. Champion of the gods, once again, plus one attack, plus one strength. But will he move this turn? That's the question. You know he's going to do something good. He's just standing there. Okay, wizard chart. One wizard, one roll. We can attempt one spell or one dispel. And he is going to attempt, well, we know what he's going to attempt. It's going to be a total power. Six, so he gets three more cards. And I get three more cards. And we are just going to randomly select a spell. So, Zetch's Firestorm. Fun. Okay. <laughs> we know that he's going to use uh, total power because he can attempt one spell, and that would be a pretty good attempt if he got that one off. So, what does this do? Flame erupts from the sorcerer's outstretched hand, striking the first target in its path with a maximum range of 24 inches. Well, that would be the dogs. Every model under the template, okay, round flame template directly over the target. Every model under the template is affected and suffers a strength 5 hit. Armor saves do not apply. Every three full wounds inflicted, pink horror rises from the ash. Well, we don't have any pink horrors. Um, so we have the flame template, which, you know, is in a box somewhere, but 24 inches flame template that's going to hit everybody um, with a strength five hits, which means six dogs are going to be killed on threes. Strength five top is four. Look out, puppies. Oh god, and he's done exactly the same as we did to <laughs> the Chaos Warriors. Uh, all the poor dogs are gone. Ugh. That is upsetting for all the dog lovers out there. And he's only got power to choose to save. And my guy is sitting on... Well, I better keep a Dispel because... <laughs> Maybe he won't get a total power next time. All right, that is just the hero and wizard phase. We still have movement and stuff to go. So here come the Chaos Ogres who are going to do another advanced move, which is six inches. And the uh, wizard who's been causing me so much trouble is going to get for the Dark Gods, march charge towards the nearest enemy plus D6. He might be able to long bomb the uh, Chieftain, nearest enemy. Let's go. D6, 5. So that is 8 plus 5, 13 inches. And he's done it. <laughs> he's charged. He's long bombed the uh, Beastman Chieftain. Um, it could be a crazy move, but it's the one that the AI has chosen to do. All right, uh, Chaos Warriors, what are they going to do for their move? They are going to hold position. Yee. No support for that Sorcerer. The champion in the middle, who has all the bonuses, is going to March of Metal. He's going to March. And lastly, the Chaos Warriors. Well, 
they are going to march for the Dark Gods as well. So, five, that is the same, those 13 inches. They're not going to get into combat. All right, now I've got a crazy <laughs> combat between a sorcerer and a beastman chieftain. Um, just in case you thought that these uh, activation sheets, activation trees were going to be boring, um, this is kind of the point of the randomization of the activation trees. You wouldn't see that in a regular sort of game. <laughs> All right, haven't fought a Chaos Warrior Sorcerer before in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so just checking the rules here. He's got the charge, so he's got two attacks. Weapon skill six, which is pretty good. Um, Beastman Chieftain weapon skill is going to be uh, six also, so it's going to be fours to hit. Here we go. On fours to hit the Beastman Champ, he missed, quiffed it completely. Beastman Champ has three attacks, the Beastman Chief. He's going to hit on fours and toughness five, so he's going to need fives to do any damage. He gets one and it's a sorcerer, so no armor and he has, uh-oh, wounds, one. So he goes down, cleaved in twain by the Beastman Chief, but not before getting his total power and wiping out a unit of beastman dogs. So that is the combat gone, that's not the general, so we don't need to roll for all that fancy stuff. It is just the beastman turn. Now I know the minotaurs are in range here. They cause fear, but so do the chaos ogres, so they're not going to need to test there. Um, wow, I guess the chief is going to see if he can charge the enemy champion, and the Gauls are out of position, so they are just going to have to rally, and this Shaman is going to have to get out of dodge. So, he is unfortunately out of range, failed charge, uh, so nothing happens there in this edition of the game. Uh, he is going to get out of here and face that way. And the Gauls cannot march, they are just going to have to wheel. And they are going to wheel around like so. So we have Minotaurs versus Ogres on this side of the board. And Strength 4, Toughness 5. Wow, they're much better than Minotaurs. This could be a mistake on my part. So Minotaurs have three attacks each because I paid for the additional hand weapons. You might be thinking, why did I pay for extra stuff for the Beastmen, but I didn't pay for extra stuff for any of the Chaos Warriors, because the Chaos Warriors are super expensive and I needed to catch up with the points. Um, so, here we go, they are weapon skill three, and I believe Minotaurs are weapon skill three? No, weapon skill four, excellent. So, at least we'll be hitting on threes. And we only got three hits, and strength four, toughness five, we're gonna need fives to do anything about that. And we got two sixes, huzzah. Okay, so um, yep, there are three wounds to an ogre, so we haven't taken one out yet. Um, the ogres have two attacks apiece, two, four, six. They'll be hitting on fours. Oh, but they got more attacks there. Strength four, toughness four for minotaurs somehow. So, fours to wound. Oh, lucky. Lucky Minotaurs. Only one wound there. Um, so, no casualties either side. No break tests there. And that means that was my charge. That was the best I could do. I, I kind of uh, forgot to do my uh, magic phase. But that's what happens with these games. Um, we've all been there, forgotten to use a magic phase when we had one. So, over to the AI and... These guys are locked in combat, so I don't need to roll for anything. Let's see what the army orders are for this round. Fanatical servants, all subject to frenzy. Um, that is going to be upsetting. Um, hero chart, where is our general? He's got a four this time, which means champion of the gods. He's still got his plus one attack, plus one strength. No more wizard chart, poor wizard. And movement chart time. So... Left to right, let's start with these warriors at the back. Four. 
March and metal, march towards the nearest enemy unit or charge. I mean, you might think this is technically the um, nearest unit, but once you march, 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 march around at all that distance, I would say the general is the closest. And that is a straight eight inches like so. Um, then we've got the other Chaos Warriors. What are they going to get? A two, advance towards the nearest. Now they might, the Gores might just be out of problem territory here. Um, unfortunately, they are not. That is four inches, so even that movement will bring them into contact, which counts as a charge. You see here on the movement, um, advance towards the nearest objective, if no objective, enemy target. If the enemy contacted, counts as a charge. So, movement for the general is a five, which is a march or charge towards the nearest enemy, which is either the shaman or the chief. I think the chief is made slightly further away by going around that unit. So we are going to march straight towards there and put the shaman in jeopardy. Okay. The ogres. Wait, no, there's no magic to be done on that side. So I haven't missed it again. And uh, the ogres are initiative four, and the minotaurs are initiative three. <laughs> so the ogres go first. And this time they are frenzied. So I'm just gonna, just gonna check that just so. Yeah, fight with their double number of attacks. That wouldn't fly in the old world. <laughs> It would be like plus one attack, but... Ooh, fifth edition, anything goes. Four attacks, four each. And... Four, four, four. This is going to hurt because it's threes to hit. One, two, three, four. Okay, no, the ogres have no love here. And four to win. Okay, that is... Gonna sting. So one Minotaur is dead. Two more wounds off the other Minotaur. It's down to one. Now, punching back for the Minotaurs. We have three attacks each. Hitting on fours. All hits, but we need fives to do any damage. Two wounds, one dead, and one on two wounds. So, one dead each. That is not gonna require a break test from either side because 5th edition, it is casualties, not wounds, that do the break test. So, over here, Chaos Warriors made the charge, and they are frenzied. Oh god, so that is 4 each. I'm going to have to do 2 rolls here, so that is normally 10 attacks. Double would be 20, so 4, 6, 8, 10, hitting on 3s. Wounding on fours, one, two, that is one dead gore. And let's do it again. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Hitting on threes. And wounding on fours. They would have their shields, but strength four, it's no shields. One. Two dead. Okay, so that's one. That is three dead gores, which means as the others move up to take their stead, there is only one gore that can fight back, which is going to need force to hit and force to wound. And the Chaos Warriors will get a six plus save. They will lose one in return. All right. Beastmen lose by, they don't have a full rank anymore, so they lose by two. General is close, the chieftain is close, nine, eight, seven. And they have failed. They are going to flee. Two to six. Oh dear. Oh dear, Beastmen. Two inches they're going to flee. And you know what? I'm just going to move them there because the Chaos Warriors are going to pursue. And they, I mean, they have to, they're, they're frenzied. Absolutely tear them to shreds. Okay, no more gauze. Yikes. 
All right, this is looking a little bit more precarious than the last game. That was Chaos Turn. So what am I going to do to, um, to... Oh, I think I have to charge Generals. Um, and the Shaman is going to hope for good magic cards this turn. And that's about all I can do. So this time, without forgetting magic, is seven. So I get four, two, three, four which means I get all of this power and I had better use it. So using my, they don't have a mage to dispel anything. So casting our lash, 2d6 strength four hits against this unit of warriors. And we do get a whole bunch, two, four, six, eight, 10. And come on, strength four, force to wound. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the warriors, armor saves apply as normal, but strength four, so six is to save. And good old Slanish comes to the rescue and we wipe them out. Can I defeat this champion of chaos in time to save the match? Now, He's still got plus one attack and plus one wound, and the whole army is fanatical and frenzied, so this is going to be a fight. Beastman Chieftain, three attacks, needing fours. And he is strength four, needing toughest four, needing fours. Okay, we've got one, and he is only one wound, so he goes down. Ouch. I am sure people are not happy with that result. <laughs> but he is down, Beastman Champion of Success. Okay, now, we've still got the Minotaurs and the Ogres here. Come on, boys, the Ogres are going to go first yet again. They are frenzied. So four, they're still frenzied. You do not re-roll on the chart every turn, just when it's the opponent's turn. Here they come. Threes to hit. And fours to wound. Oh dear, no armor on those Minotaurs. They are gone. Back and forth, back and forth we go. Who is actually going to win this game? Nobody knows. Better tidy up my magic over here. Keep one of those power cards. All right, wowzers. Um, okay, so the enemy general has been slain. Chaos champion has been slain. So let's test for our warriors. They are fine, they are sticking around, and our ogres are... Ooh, are they going to flee? Yes, they are. Okay, they're only leadership seven. So, the ogres... Five inches heading for the hills. That is great news. Okay, that was my turn, so it is their turn again. And compulsory moves happen as normal. So... Rallying the ogres, and they do. So that was only a small reprieve, short reprieve for the beastmen. And army orders four. Chaos warriors are four, which means leadership ten for everybody. And uh, the chaos, we need no need to roll for movement for them because they've already moved and rallied. And the chaos warriors here are going to roll a March of Metal charge towards the nearest. It is definitely going to be in range of the Beast Chieftain. Oh, it is tight. Shaman, Chieftain. I mean, I say tight. It looks like the Beastman might be done for this game. All right. Two attacks each. There is two. Well, actually, we can line that up. So there's three in range to attack the Chieftain, and it's going to be hitting on fours. So fours, one hits, and does wound. Okay, Beastman Chieftain, down a wound. And Beastman Chieftain will swing back, hitting on fours, one hit, wounding on fours, and six to save. It is saved. Ooh. Okay, he is outnumbered. Um, substantially, and they have a banner. So he is going to need to pass his leadership test, which he does not. 
he is going to flee five inches. Uh-oh. And these warriors are going to pursue exactly five inches. That is the AI's turn right there. And we are going to try and rally our poor chieftain. He does rally. Can't do anything there though. Shaman's gonna turn around and do the magic phase. Come on, can we slanish our way through this mess? One, two, three. Yes, we've got our power cards. Oh, we actually have the total power card this time. So we'll expend that. Try our lash once again. Six this time. Strength four hits. Could he wipe them? Only two, three, sorry. And one saved. That is two dead warriors from this whip of slash. And that is 25% casualties. That is nine though, so they are staying strong. All right, now it is time for the AI again. The army is gonna be half weapon skilling. The movement for the ogres is gonna be a march. So that would be 12. And the Chaos Warriors, yep, yeah, it's going to be a move. They're going to go for the Chieftain, see if they can finish him off. And combat. So, once again, one, two, three, guys can get into combat. They are going to hit on fours. They are going to wound on fours, and no armor has been purchased for the Beastman Chief which I'm just going to double check now, is toughness. Oh, he's toughness five. So one of those wounds got through. He's got one left. He's going to punch back and miss with everything. Once again, they have the standard. Um, he's going to make his save this time. There's nothing much for the beastmen to do. The shaman in their turn is going to move around. Try the magic phase again. Ah, oh, this time we've got, we're not even gonna check cards for that. There's gonna be power cards in there. He is going to try to cast the lash, but it is only eight inches and it's gonna be out of range, which is super unfortunate because I think they might be in charge. <laughs> I didn't look closely enough. All right, the uh, Chaos Warriors are initiative six, and the Beastman uh, is initiative five, so the Chaos Warriors are going to go first again. Uh, half weapon skill this time. So they're going to need fours, not threes. Oh no, they're going to need fives, because it is half. Um, they definitely have it though. And they are going to need fours to wound. And, oh, fives to wound, sorry, once again. And that is definitely going to be the end of the Beastman Chief. There is one Shaman left who has failed his leadership role, and that is the game. Chaos Ogres and Chaos Warriors left. Beastman wiped off the field. And that is without an opponent too, so that's pretty sad. Um, and that's Field of Fate. Um, I hope it is something that answers your need for playing games without having someone around or just without having the time to organize someone to come around. Just wanted to have a quick game by yourself. Um, as you can see, it can kick your butt sometimes. All right, thanks for watching.